This car here, you probably know exactly what it is. It really needs no introduction. If you've been on the road today, you've probably seen a million of these things driving around. It's a 2022 Tesla Model Y, and these things are everywhere. And because of that, well, there's a few interesting opportunities that you might want to consider with a car like this in 2025 going into 2026. The EV used market, if you've been paying attention, ooh, it's a very interesting place right now. Depreciation has hit, prices are low, and so thinking about getting a car like this in this year of 2025 or going into 2026 seems like a great option because you can get excellent deals on these. I mean, this car is just under 40,000 miles. It's the dual motor long range battery. It's got a wide interior. It's got the upgraded wheels. It's got full self driving. This is an excellent package. And so on the surface, it seems like this is a great buy. You can find a good deal on one, go ahead and pick it up. And in most ways that is hundred percent true, but there are kind of two people when it comes to the Tesla market right now, I'm talking to the second version, but the first one is just someone who wants an EV that's good for commuting, doesn't really care about any other technology or anything like that. They just want this type of car and they like the supercharger network all that kind of stuff for those type of people go out find yourself a good deal you don't have to watch the rest of this video but i'm talking to the second group and that's people like me who care about the technology what tesla is kind of promising with full self driving with the different computers with all the things tesla has been building themselves up as a company to be this car though was supposed to work in that ecosystem but it seems like now that's not the case. In fact, we know Tesla has confirmed full self-driving on this car with hardware three will not be coming in this shape and form. So from that standpoint, if you care about the technology, well, this might not be something you wanna get. Okay, so in this video, I've got two questions to answer. First is how does hardware three work with full self-driving? Is it something you should still care about? If you have a car like this, should you buy full self-driving? If you are looking at a used option, is this a car that you should actually get or just spring for a newer car with hardware four? So we're gonna go ticket for a drive. Let's do that first, then we'll talk about the next topic. Now I've got a lot of experience with this car, so I kind of know how it works already, but we're gonna put it to the full test. We're gonna start out here. We're in the middle of nowhere, Central Valley, California. It's actually very pretty out here, but even your grandma could drive on these roads even if she was blind these are totally easy but we're going to start out here and then we're going to head downtown-ish or into the city here and see how that works and kind of do the whole gambit i'll say this as just a little teaser before we head in the car it's a mixed bag it's a mixed bag for sure but let's hop in and we'll see how this does all right let's head out so let's put it into full self-driving it is not driving itself we don't really have destination but we'll just let it decide where it wants to go this is like i said a situation on this type of road we're in the middle of nowhere we're backcountry roads it's a two-lane highway with barely any traffic anyone can drive these roads if you have a teenager and you want them to drive this is where you would bring them because it is super simple so the car well actually i was about to say that it's doing great and we just went around that corner and it kind of jolted and slammed on the brakes we're going over a curve here eh, it's handling it pretty decently from like the first versions of autopilot back in the day this is the type of road that it would actually work really well on just with auto steer and all that stuff and so we get to see how that works i have it in hurry mode right now which seems to be the best the most normal but it's going a little fast jeez <laughs> It's going a little fast. But before we keep going, I'm here to let you know about something that ends on December 2nd. So you gotta jump on this. And that's from our sponsor, Kinsta. Kinsta is rated the number one provider in managed WordPress hosting. They are running their Black Friday promotion and it's one of the biggest they've done yet. And it offers a ton. So if you run a website and you're just tired of worrying about it, worrying about hosting, worrying about traffic, well, that's exactly what Kinsta is here to help with. And they offer a ton, but most importantly, if you decide to start using them or you wanna try them out, well, they're gonna help you migrate everything over. So that's gonna be super easy. And they offer 24 seven live support. So if you ever have an issue or something comes up, you can actually talk to a real person whenever you need to and get that problem fixed. And Kinsta is trusted by over 140,000 different companies around the world. And they are rated number one in WordPress hosting by G2. And they beat out over 357 other companies to gain that spot. But the reason they are in that position is because of what they offer. Like I said, they offer a ton, but just a few examples. One is up to 200% faster performance when using Kinsta. And you get an SLA backed uptime guarantee of up to 99.99%. .99%. So if this sounds like something you want to 
tryouts, well, now is the perfect time because between now and December 2nd, you can get the first six months free on all annual standard plan. Or if you wanna go monthly, you get 50% off the first six months on your standard plan. And every plan comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So check out the link down in the description or use this QR code, which has been on screen. They offer everything I talked about and more. And well, with this deal, it's worth jumping on. The latest version of full self-driving right now is version 14. And in order to get that, you need to have a hardware for vehicle that doesn't work on these cars here. I'm on version 12.6.4. That is the latest version that's available at the time of this filming. And so that's what I'm using right now. And well, there is a difference that you will notice, and it's a pretty big one. And I'll just say this, from this is all from my experience. In my experience in a Juniper Model Y, so hardware for Model Y, it is near perfect. You really start to get that robo taxi feel that you are wanting from this type of system. We just checked out the robo taxis, which I believe are on a certain version of hardware or version 14. And similarly there, they feel nearly perfect, almost like a person really doesn't need to be paying attention or driving at all. They're getting close. This though is not that. In the drive over here, multiple times, it did some pretty funky things. We're going like fast enough. I kind of want to take it out of hurry mode, even though the speed limit is 55 here. Uh, I feel like it, it feels faster than I would be driving in a lot of these situations uh, because we're going around blind corners, we're going over crests. It's a little, I don't know. I don't love the way this car is driving right now. One example is that we were driving through an intersection uh, about 75 feet from the lights. It was green, it turned yellow. And you know, typically you just keep driving because you would then have to slam on the brakes to make that intersection stop. This car though, for whatever reason, saw that light change. As soon as it happened, it slammed on the brakes and I, it was not a, a safe environment. So I had to take over. That's just one example of the, the types of things it does. Another one is that, uh, well, we are going to go park in the parking structure and it just kind of stopped. You could tell it was kind of thinking of what it was going to do. And I just couldn't really figure it out. Those are things that, not to say they don't happen on hardware car, hardware for vehicles, but it's not as often. Whereas this car, in pretty much every single drive, there is one situation where I feel like I'm going to have to take over, which is not exactly what you want. It doesn't give you that confidence. All right, that's a decent impression. I was kind of surprised at how this is doing, how this is driving. We've been driving like this for a little while. This is, yeah, this is not great, but we're gonna make it back to the city where I think a lot of people really care about full self-driving and we'll see how that does. Okay, situation number two, we are on the highway. And this is where this car does it nearly perfectly. In all my use cases, this is what you really want full self-driving for, for commutes both before and after work and for road trips. Full self-driving on the highway is excellent. Even without hardware four, hardware three does it really well. But honestly, this is where most cars, not even just Teslas, they actually do this great. There's lane centering, there's um, you know automatic cruise control, all those things. It does the, that pretty well. We are almost solved when it comes to this situation. And this is the perfect situation where you can kind of just sit back and relax. Now, it's still supervised. I still have to be paying attention. If I look at my phone or do something like that, which you are not supposed to do, the system notices with the camera that's water watching you and you will have to touch the steering wheel or take over. So, you know, it's not all the way hands off at, in that sense, but for the most part, it does exactly what you'd want. And what's great is that this really does take a load off of driving. If you're on a long trip or you're on your commute, this really does make the drive feel more relaxing, more easier or, or just easier to do. It takes a load off. And I think that's what these systems are really great for. When it comes to the highway, honestly, there's not much to say here because it just does it really, really well. But let's Let's go to the city. Just got off the highway. Beautiful oasis of Tower District here in Fresno. It's beautiful. You should come here. Come visit. But this is a uh, more typical situation where full self-driving still needs to be fully solved, even with hardware 4 and version 14, but is getting very close in those cars. With hardware 3, though, kind of a, kind of a different story, although it is still quite good. And with this car in particular, this is where I experience full self-driving the most. It works. I mean, you're seeing now we are going through the 
intersections, there's traffic, you know, this is a one-way street, it's handling all that, no problem, uh, like you'd expect. The hard thing with full self-driving testing is that's just hard to do. I could take the same basic route with another car that has hardware three and get a different result. I could do that with hardware four and get a different result yet again. And it is not something that is like super quantifiable. It's all about this feel. Because in every single one of those cars, whether they have the same hardware, same software or not, there are situations where things are gonna go great and situations where it's gonna mess up because that's just kind of where the software is right now. And so it's kind of hard to test, but in my general use for city driving, I'd actually say it's much better than what you get when we were on those back roads. This is much more confident, much smoother. And I think probably that has to do with a lot, uh, you know, the fact that there's a lot of reference points. We've got streets, we've got lots of cars, we've got pedestrians. Like it's, there's a lot to focus on, a lot to pay attention to. I'm sure that actually helps in certain ways. Maybe, I don't know, maybe that's not how it works at all, but that's just kind of how it feels. And whereas when we're on those back roads, there's kind of just a road that it kind of decides what it wants to do. And well, here's actually an interesting situation. Probably if that was me driving, definitely would have gone through that light. And now I'm sitting in the crosswalk, although it just stopped. It's kind of similar to that light situation I was talking about earlier. All right, that was interesting. I had to take over and push the accelerator pedal there because there's a pedestrian that's signaled for me to go. They probably should have gone, but they're signaling, so I told the car to go. The car obviously is going to, you know, wait for the pedestrian, which makes sense. That's actually the right thing to do. But if I was trying not to control the car at all, that would have been kind of annoying because a car had pulled in behind me at the stop sign. Those are situations that are still being worked out. Those certain things where I just don't notice them as much in the hardware four cars and the newer versions of FSD. Um, not to say that this couldn't get updated to fix that. That's a very, I would say easy fix, um, but just something I noticed. But overall consensus is that it's actually pretty competent. This is doing exactly what I would want it to do. But I say the difference is, is that in a hardware four car with the latest FSD, I'm like getting to the point where I don't even care about paying attention and I that's not a good thing you should definitely pay attention but it feels that good that it's that confident at driving that I trust it now in this car there's been enough situations that I just am not there and I think that makes sense because it's not on the same type of software it's not using the same hardware but the question is what is that going to look like in the future because right now today this is what it is but Tesla's been saying a lot about hardware three vehicles some good some not so good uh, and the future of what this car is, especially if you're looking to buy one now, or if you have one now, well, Hardware 3, Hardware 3 is in a tough spot. So let's head back to the studio, and then we'll talk about this a bit more. Hardware 3 vehicles, well, they're not down and out. They actually work shockingly well for how old these systems are. And so that gives some hope that, well, they're going to still work in the future. Now, that's kind of the whole second part of this that I wanted to talk about. You've seen kind of my experience with full self-driving in a Hardware 3 car. And like I said, this all really varies, depends on your situation. I've seen some people say that they rarely ever have to take over. In my experience, in a Hardware 3 vehicle using FSD, it is a uh, very hit or miss situation. Works pretty well, like I said, but just not all the time. But I think the more important question, especially if you already have a hardware three vehicle or you're in the market for a used vehicle and it's gonna have hardware three, the question is, okay, what's the future of this look like? Because right now, full self driving works pretty well, but it's not, it's not perfect. We know there's a lot more room to improve with the software that already exists. So what will happen? Well, there's a few ways this can go. Luckily, Tesla has acknowledged that this is a problem and that there will be some sort of fix that they are, are working on or at least thinking about. Now the question is, what is that? What does that actually look like? Now, just a little while ago, we had the earnings call and here we heard the CFO say that they had not given up on hardware three vehicles. So that's a good thing. And the head of AI and autopilot at Tesla said that they are working on a V14 light. 
This is taking that version 14 software that I talked about earlier and that is running on hardware for cars right now, taking that and kind of stripping it down to make it work with a hardware three vehicle. At least that, that's the idea. And apparently this will be coming in Q2 of 2026. So until then, don't really expect any updates. And so in a sense, that's good that Tesla is not forgetting about these hardware three vehicles. But on the other hand, it's not the full version that we all want. And in the past, Tesla has basically admitted that in order to get this full self-driving to really work, especially once it goes unsupervised, there's going to have to be some sort of hardware upgrade. They're going to have to put in physical new hardware. But the problem is that seems like a very daunting task. The computers have different like physical sizes. They have different thermal needs. They have different camera placements, different camera options. These are all things that would have to be retrofitted in some way. The, the idea of what this looks like is not really fully fledged out. And so that's making a lot of people question if this is ever actually going to happen. And so, like I said, if you are in the market for one of these cars or you have one already, well, this is something you really have to think about. Now, I think there's a few ways that this could go in the future. Obviously, it's the future, so we don't really know. This is just my speculation. The most hopeful scenario is that, well, Tesla will just figure out a way to actually do this and upgrade the hardware. So when they're designing AI5 and AI6, that these will actually work and be able to be retrofitted into the older cars. That is certainly possible, and I hope that happens, but I wouldn't hold my breath there. What I really think is going to happen, and we've already kind of seen hints of this, is that Tesla is just gonna wait this out. Instead of Tesla upgrading your old car, what they really want you to do is you upgrade your old car to a newer version and just buy a new car from them. And I have a feeling that they'll probably just wait this out and say, yeah, a fix is coming, a fix is coming, or a new hardware is coming. And that eventually it's just not gonna be an issue anymore because these cars are just gonna be too old. Maybe they'll offer some incentives so that, hey, we're not able to give you a new hardware, but instead we'll give you like $5,000 off the new software. We'll give you full self-driving for free in the new car if you go buy it. I think that is much more likely, it makes a lot more sense it not only gets people to buy a new car potentially, uh, but it also lets them just not have to worry about retrofitting old cars. Not the best solution, but it just feels like the most likely option. What that exactly looks like, who knows? That's just my hunch. But yeah, that is the situation with Hardware 3 right now. It's kind of messy. There's not a perfect answer and not a perfect you know view of what the future is going to be. The car right now does work. And like I said, if you are in the market for one of these used or you already have one, the car itself is great. They drive exceptionally well. You still get the supercharger network. You still get most of the tech. These cars are excellent. But if what you seriously care about is full self-driving that technology and you wanna get into a Tesla for cheap, well, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have hardware for at a minimum. And so that means you're probably gonna be paying a little bit more, but just something to think about. The future of what these cars are going to have is not clear, but I don't know, we're just gonna have to wait and see.